Okay, I'm Ken Rosignol with the Chesapeake Today. We're here at the Fitzy's Marina and Restaurant on the beautiful Breton Bay at Compton, Maryland at the end of Joe Hazel Road, home of the best crab cakes in town. They're open on weekends, starting usually about Thursday afternoon. We're here talking to Marcus Drake. He's a candidate in the Republican primary and for St. Mary's County Commissioners. And what district is it, Marcus? District 2. District 2. Yes. And that's basically Hollywood and Leonardtown for people that don't understand all the district numbers. Correct. Okay. All right. Marcus, would you explain to the readers of the Chesapeake today a little bit about yourself, your background, what you've been doing with your life so far? <laughs> okay. Well, I'm a 23-year uh, retired Army veteran. I, I held several different jobs during that time. I was field artillery. I was a tank crewman and finished up my career as a logistics specialist here with the Maryland National Guard before retiring in 2015. And after that, I went into long haul truck driving and was an independent operator for about eight years before getting, getting things lined up to a point where I was able to retire. I've lived here since 2008. I, I originally grew up in Utah, moved out here in 2008 after my first deployment to Iraq. And as I tell people, and, and it sounds kind of cliche, but the minute my, my boots hit the ground here, I felt like this was home. Much much more so, honestly, than Utah ever was. And I decided, my, my decision to run for commissioner was prompted by seeing that fiscally in this county, things are, they, they were just out of whack. Money was being spent in the wrong places. And things like public safety, and infrastructure and education were being neglected in favor of amenities and niceties like turf fields and hiking trails. Okay, speaking of the turf fields, yes. in 2018 we had the very tragic shooting of the kid at Gray Mills High School that brought a gun to school, came in yes. through the front door and killed his girlfriend before being approached by a school resource officer and then taking his own life with his gun. Uh, at the time, I asked the County Commissioner Randy Guy, what about putting, hardening the front doors and putting metal detectors up there instead of going through with these uh, sports fields with artificial turf you just mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, we could have done all the front doors for the cost of one of those fields. Absolutely. And that's, that's one of the big issues. My, my main point in my campaign is public safety because without a safe community everything else falls down businesses don't want to relocate here families are afraid to take you know they're, they're afraid to go out and enjoy the parks and other recreation facilities that are available in this county people won't want to move if if a place has a reputation for being unsafe or crime ridden or whatever term you want to use it's not going to prosper because people aren't going to want to put their money into it and so public safety is paramount to everything else. Okay, you've talked about budget spending, physical, being a physical conservative. What would you do different with the current pending capital budget where they have a $26 million allotted for a new sheriff's palace in Leonardtown without any public input into it at all? Uh, first of all, the, the fact that they're not asking for any public input is a big red flag to me right there. The, the, the public, we, as, as is so often said, the people that are elected to office, such as I intend to be, represent the public. We are not the leaders. We are the representatives. We enact the will and the voice of the people, not the other way around. And if the people aren't allowed to have a voice, how can we do what they want? How can we effectively <clears throat> govern and, and set standards and policies that well, are going to benefit the majority of the community? Well, in the early 90s, the county commissioners at that time established a space needs study. And they proposed a $23 million judicial palace at Leonard Hall. A new board of county commissioners elected in 94. Late in 95, they reversed 
the decision to go ahead with that judicial palace and instead expand the existing courthouse and renovate that courthouse, which was built in 1901. And today it's a beautiful facility in the center of life and business in Leonardtown. Now, this sheriff's palace that is being proposed, Commissioner O'Connor is running for sheriff. He says he is in favor of abandoning that and instead designating the new six million dollar uh, sheriff's headquarters in Lexington Park to be the headquarters for the patrol division and he says he's willing to just take the existing uh, facility and building in Leonardtown the way it is would you favor that? I would, I would and another thing that was mentioned and not just not just by Mr. O'Connor but by a number of people in the community is their their frustration with the fact that the the new the, the newest substation there in Lexington Park is only minimally staffed and then only during banking hours when that's in one of the, the highest crime if not the highest crime area in the county and Mr. O'Connor made made the point that you can take the people that are overcrowding the office or, or that need to expand and you can put them into these facilities that already exist but that aren't being fully utilized. And that's a much, much better use of taxpayer dollars than shelling out $23 million for a brand new building and still having a bunch of buildings sitting empty. Actually, I want to correct you. It's $26 million. $26 million. And, and the idea of having a bigger building with more deaths makes you wonder about the priorities of law enforcement under the Sheriff Cameron. Why, are, why do you think people need to be behind desks instead of out on patrol, walking the beat in Lexington that's, Park where you actually can walk, and yes, being involved in the community instead of giving a, becoming desk jockeys? That's, that's another point that a lot of citizens have made as well, and I think it's very valid. Okay, in terms of the spending in Leonardtown, do you see a time when there's a need for an, a big expansion of hiring personnel in, in county government. Do you think we have enough now? Do you think there's a room for an efficiency study to determine if we're overstaffed? I, I would say I like that last option, yes, because that's basically what I have in mind to do once I get into office in every aspect of this county's administration that I can is to look into ways that we can cut, cut the fat because I see from my perspective I see a lot of areas where services are being over utilized where we could we could look at cutting down or minimizing some things in favor of fiscal fiscal responsibility again expanding government no we're, we're definitely not in a position where we need to be talking about expanding our government or, or our staffing at this point, not without good justification. Let me ask you about your campaign. What, what are you learning from getting out on the campaign trail this year? This is your first time running for yes, office? Yes. What are you learning about the county and, and what kind of reception are you getting from people? I've been getting a very positive reception from people. The the overwhelming opinion is that we need change in this county. We need new ideas. That the, the status quo, the good old boy system, isn't serving the county anymore. And well a good example of that would be the pot factory placed in the residential neighborhood. Yes. In the critical areas by the current commission Abs board. Absolutely. And and where it was basically backdoored through the community by having it having it zoned as a or designated as a horticultural and facility as opposed to an agricultural facility without any public hearing exactly and that's that's how they managed to get away with not requiring a public hearing well it appears that they're all blaming the former director of the land use Phil Shire uh, as being some sort of rogue bureaucrat but I, I don't know. There's, I think a lot of people have a lot of questions about the entire process. Oh, and is, is he just a scapegoat? I don't. I think he had his hands in it. But no, I don't think he was the sole, solely responsible. I, there, there were other fingers in that pie. Okay, we have other challenges too. 
One is the gridlock at Great Mills has gone on for decades. It has been ignored by Democrat Congressman Steny Hoyer, Senator Roy Dyson, Delegate John Bohannon, all of them Democrats, uh, Commissioner Dan Raley, who represented the area, and never done a thing, and opening up that gridlock by use of a, a um, reversible center lane and widening the bridge over the little uh, St. Mary's River there at Great Mills oh. and having a reversible center lane from the intersection of 246 and 5 up to 249 and 5 at Callaway. That was actually de- a priced out by the state highway in 2006 at being $1.6 million. Nothing was done. It was never made a priority by the county commissioners. We have the one mile of widening on Route 5 in Leonardtown been going on for five years. Randy Guy's running for re-election using a picture of the ground baking and shoveling the dirt <laughs> as the main focus of his website. And five years later, it still isn't finished by the doofuses of the Maryland Department of Transportation. Uh, I don't know who makes it so slow you have uh, FDR Boulevard. It's been in the county's game plan for 40 years. It's still not finished. Mm -hmm. What makes this county so slow, backwards, and awkward in getting any kind of road projects done or accomplished? Do you know? And what would would you bring to the table to uh, open up the gridlock and even, even getting a replacement bridge? They Democrats only talk about it at election time, and then they do nothing. Exactly, and and that's something the Democrats are famous for is is they have these grand plans and they come up with these grand ideas for for making everything wonderful and this is going to work and we can do this and this. Not once do you ever hear them talk about how they're going to fund it or how they're going to implement it. Okay, well they're, they we, they just want to go from point A to point Z. Okay, we know we know we know point. that we know they're the villains in these sagas. Okay, <laughs> but what will you do now, to make it different? As far as what I'll do, uh, I, I like the idea of the reversible center lane. That's something I hadn't considered. I, I would love to see any option. Well, you advanced. can see you can go on, my, on the Chesapeake Today website and see a picture of Senator Dyson and Delegate Bohannon holding the plan with Great Mills Road in the background. They did nothing that, to advance it. Idea. They did nothing, just, and, and Delegate Crosby, somebody... Delegate Crosby, he's out there mouthing about it now, and mm, you know that plan's I, I know been there for years. He that's hadn't a big talking point of his this, this he, go around. He put on a, a video on his Facebook page, and he seemed to be shocked when the state highway people told him, "Well, it takes two years to move the utilities." He didn't even know that you know he was just trying to make a grandstand play for publicity to make people think he was in action and that's that's one area where I I think I can bring my logistic experience and wisdom to bear is I don't realize I, I don't realize I realize that you don't just say we're going to expand the road and then it magically happens there's there's so much more involved in that you have to take into consideration time wise financial wise manpower wise you know delays because of weather or or whatever you have to take all of that into account but on the other side of that coin you have to hold these people accountable once you've made a plan and you're and you said okay we're going to put this plan into place you need to hold these people accountable for, for their expenses specifically and their time management in your background how does your background in the Army, as being a, a trucker, how does that help you understand how to accomplish these goals now? How do you bring that to play? It, it's, it's enabled me, because I was, a, I, I was a supply sergeant, logistics specialist, that's a nice technical term, I was responsible for coordinating all the unit moves and all the unit's equipment and ensuring forward projecting of budgets as to what we'd need going into the future and coordinating transportation and lodging and food and all the minutiae that was required to get a unit from point A to point B safely, whether it's from here up to Have de Grace for a two-week drill or from here to Iraq for a year-long deployment. And I was, I was given a budget, of course, 
I was not only expected to work within that budget and be able to prior prioritize the needs of my unit and my people, but I also was expected to project out into the future what was I going to need in the future so that I could request, I could say, I need X amount of money for the next year to be able to, to make sure my unit's running smoothly. So your, your experience, you feel, will help you understand the county's budget, how to pick it apart, how to figure out if you're being sandbagged by the department heads who just want a bigger budget, Absolutely. And, and then finding out what is really legitimately needed in funding it. Absolutely. And, and you believe that your background can help you excel at that? Both, yes, both, both in the military and, and my trucking experience, because being an owner-operator, I was responsible for my business. Well, as an owner-operator, you... Maintenance you, of my truck or you were making a, sure my loads were right. Or, you were a small business, just yes, like somebody exactly. here in the county. Yours, yours just had wheels. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs>